GMOs are a commonplace topic in today's society, showing up everywhere from food labels to commercials to news articles. Despite their prevalence, information about GMOs is often contradictory, biased, or even non-existent if you're unsure of where to look. In fact, a recent study found that nearly 70% of Americans are not confident that they know what GMOs are. If that includes you, don't worry. We've made this video to help you understand the basics. The acronym GMO is short for Genetically Modified Organism. In general, this term refers to the changing of an organism's DNA, which is a set of instructions that determine how an organism develops. Although people usually only think of crops when they hear GMOs, the term can actually apply to all living things, like bacteria, fungi, and animals. Okay, but how are GMOs actually made? The process can be broken down into four basic steps. First, scientists must find the specific part of an organism's DNA, known as a gene, that codes for the trait they want. Next, the scientists copy this gene they identified. Then, the identified gene is inserted into the DNA of a different organism, the one they are trying to modify. Finally, the modified organism is allowed to grow and express the new gene of choice. Now, let's walk through these steps using one of the most common GMOs grown in the U.S., Bt corn. Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt, is a bacteria that makes a protein which is toxic to insect pests. For decades, this has been sprayed on fields as an organic pesticide. However, since Bt degrades under direct sunlight, it has to be applied multiple times and has limited efficiency. Genetic modification, however, offers a cost-effective alternative. First, Scientists identify the gene in Bacillus thuringiensis that makes the insect-killing protein. Next, scientists will copy this gene, and they insert it into corn cells that are in the embryo stage. Once this new Bt corn grows into a full plant, it makes toxins that kill the insect pests. This is an amazing accomplishment because fewer pesticides have to be sprayed on the Bt corn. Also, the toxin is completely harmless to mammals, fish, and birds. Since the origins of farming, humans have been selectively breeding plants and animals to find ways to improve their yield, flavor, and disease resistance. Upon a quick Google search, you can find countless articles, websites, and blogs with many different claims about whether or not genetic engineering, the process used to make GMOs, is significantly different than these conventional methods of selective breeding which have been used by farmers for centuries. The purpose of both genetic engineering and conventional breeding is essentially the same, to produce crops with improved characteristics by changing their DNA. There are, however, a few key differences between the two methods. The general goal of conventional breeding is to enhance the expression of genetic traits already present in a species. Although this can create new varieties of an organism, it is based on emphasizing traits that already existed in that organism's species. In the past few decades, however, advancements in biotechnology have allowed breeders to make more precise and efficient modifications using genetic engineering. The foods that result from these newer techniques are what we typically call GMOs. Genetic engineering allows for the insertion of new genes from species different from the one that is being modified. So, why are we turning towards GMOs instead of sticking with conventional methods? Well, for one, the desired characteristic, like pest resistance in the case of Bt corn, might not be present in the organism's actual DNA. Therefore, no amount of conventional breeding could ever result in resistance. In addition, genetic engineering is far more precise and can result in expression of the desired characteristic way sooner than generations of conventional breeding ever could. GMOs are still a relatively new technology, so it is understandable for consumers to be wary of the unknown. One common concern is whether genetically modified crops and animals are safe to eat. What many consumers do not realize, however, is the amount of extensive testing that goes into GM products before they can become commercially available. Virtually all GMO products are altered by only one or two genes that synthesize one or two new proteins, and the origins and effects of these proteins are thoroughly researched. Scientists work hard to ensure there are no unexpected consequences of these genetic modifications, including testing for potential allergic reactions. In general, scientists agree that GMO crops have no more risk than crops created through the conventional farming methods we discussed earlier. 
In the past 30 years, there have been over 2,000 studies analyzing the impacts of GMOs, and the vast majority have found no evidence to suggest negative health effects. One positive environmental impact of GMOs has been the production of insect-tolerant crops, which cuts down on the need for treating crops with toxic chemicals. In addition, it results in increased crop yield that can reduce the amount of land devoted to agriculture. Thanks to these characteristics, GMOs have already saved entire farming industries from collapse, and they have the potential to address many crises on a global scale. For example, in the 1990s, the Hawaiian papaya industry was almost wiped out by the papaya ringspot virus. Between 1993 and 2006, production fell by over 50%, and many small family farms were struggling to survive. Things were looking grim until Dennis Gonsalves, a Hawaiian-born scientist at Cornell University, developed a genetically modified papaya designed to be resistant to the virus. After a careful trial run, it became clear that his genetically modified rainbow papaya was the solution to this crisis. A decade after the rainbow papaya became commercially available, it accounted for over 90% of all papaya production. For the local farmers, this development may have saved their business. As one Hawaiian papaya farmer said, GM papayas mean sustainability for our family farm. Information about GMOs can be really confusing and contradictory at times especially since consumers don't get to see the countless hours of research and testing that go into every GM product you see at the grocery store. This is why learning the science behind the technology can be incredibly helpful. Hopefully this video has helped you understand the basics of GMOs and will make it easier for you to navigate through all the websites, commercials, and stories on this controversial topic. If you're interested in learning more about GMOs, please check out some of these helpful sources. Thank you so much for joining us for this video.